now. The UK Prime Minister has fended off an attempt by pro-European Conservative rebels to keep open the option of Britain entering into a customs union with the EU after Brexit. Let's take a look at what the papers across the UK are saying. In the Financial Times, Theresa May restores her frail grip on Brexit by seeing off pro-EU rebels last night to win a crunch vote. In the Times, Tory whips issued a warning to Remain backing MPs that they might face a summer general election if they defeated the Prime Minister's plans on a Brexit customs union. And in the Scotsman, there's a call for a rerun of the EU referendum as vote leave was referred to the police following an official investigation that concluded that it breached spending limits. Today, the Prime Minister gives evidence to the Liaison Committee, which will question her about issues ranging from Brexit to changes in her government. Let's get back to David Bloom, HSBC Global Head of Currency Strategy. David, dollar bull, you've been a sterling bear. Yeah. We keep getting all this political noise, just the latest, uh, uh, over this customs bill now. Does sterling have much further to fall from here? Well, uh, we haven't got it falling that much from yeah. here. I mean, our forecast is 130, and um, I'll tell you, when, I, when it was 143, I was sweating. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I was under massive pressure. You know, there it was going to be a soft Brexit. The Bank of England was going to be raising rates, and everything was looking uh, uh, more relaxed. And now it's kind of... You see the inflation numbers today. Uh, we've gone from one and done to two and through. The Bank of England's going to do maybe one more and then end. And now we've got this political situation that remains very messy. So on what basis... So Sterling should be cheap to fair value, and it is. Right. So, perfectly happy with our full cost all. OK, but given that you're a dollar bull, and so we could get sort of downward pressure on sterling just because of, of dollar strength, sure. and the fact, I question whether the market at where sterling is right now, 130.34, is really pricing the worst-case scenario. Well, we're not, we can't be, because we don't know what the answer yeah. is. I mean, two weeks ago, we were pricing in a different scenario, which looked like a softer Brexit. So if you imagine a binomial distribution, the softer Brexit got bigger and the hard Brexit got smaller, and now it's flipping around the other way. So it's all over the place, and people... Uh, just not quite sure what to do with it. So you don't know this outcome, and the delta is dripping away as time. Your TikTok on your Bloomberg, well, we've got a date. Well, you know, it's uh, next year. This is, I just Sorry, love this, folks. I mean, to go Greek letters with David Bloom is just great. That's right where I wanted to go, David, is the X-axis. Prime Minister May's X-axis is different than Labor, Tory, and all the other shades here. What's the city's X-axis? Well, we, um, and there's two big things we worried about uh, or must be concerned about with sterling. One is the interest rates, what's going on there, and uh, should they be raising rates or not? Um, um, that's, we think they will raise rates. Should they be raising rates? Not quite sure. And the other is we've got a timing. We chose a date. We've got an end date. It's not like all currencies are a probability of uh, a distribution of all different events with no end. This has an end. So which is it? And so the sterling goes, well, I don't know which one it is. So we feel it's a bit way out, but there. So it moves a little bit. But at some point in time, we could get a big move if we think something dramatic is going to happen, either a customs union or a no deal. Which one is it? Well, we're hoping very much it's a, it's a softer Brexit for, for sterling's sake. David, volatility in sterling and euro sterling has been subdued even through all this. I just yeah. want to draw your attention. I'm sure you've seen it. Euro sterling trading at 89.18. Yeah. It's been between that 87 and 89 range since yeah. April. It's broken out of that now. Uh, is there further upside, therefore, to well, euro sterling? Well, the range is quite tight at the moment. But I think sterling's done some of the, the move recently. But euro's playing a bit of catch-up. So... Yeah, we've got it really staying in that range. I mean, we've got euro going back to 113 or so, and cable's nearly there. So we could get a bit of a turnaround. But as I said earlier, to break that range, to get that burst through, we've got to hear a, a slam dunk piece of news that we're hearing it's one way or the other. And at the moment, we're just yeah. vacillating from hard to soft, soft to hard, and we're not quite sure. So volatility is subdued because you don't know which one it is. So you can't put all your eggs in the one side or the other side. So you... You, you, which one? Which one? Yeah, yeah. Two weeks ago, soft, 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 soft. It's going to be soft. Now it's, oh, it could be hard. And so you get tired of right. it and people just go, right, OK, lower volatility, well, sterling roughly between 130 and 134. My goodness, Brexit tiring David Bloom out, Tom. Oh, it takes man. a lot to tire out David. Yeah. <laughs>